Hello guys, this is Vivek here. I welcome you all to my channel. Today in this video, I will discuss on this topic called the consequences of sudden unloading on power plants. As we all know, on 5th April 2020, our Honorable Prime Minister made a request to all of us to voluntarily switch off our lights for a duration of 9 minutes. Following this request, some concern was shown by various power system engineers and power system operators and they told us that uh, this might result into a possible blackout. However, as the situation was known beforehand, they took uh, various initiatives in order to avoid any possible blackout. So here in this video, I will discuss why such concerns were being made and uh, what could have gone wrong if the whole event was unknown to the power system operators. And I will also discuss about uh, the measures they took in order to avoid the blackout. Let's get started. But before we begin, make sure you subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and press the bell icon to receive the notification of every single video I make. Now, in order to understand the consequences of uh, unloading on power plants, we need to have a overall idea about uh, power plants, right? In India, there are various uh, means by which power generation is done. There is coal-based thermal power plant, there is uh, uh, gas, there is nuclear there is also a high hydroelectric power plants as well as the renewable resources but among this the thermal power plant or the coal based thermal power plant is the most important why because it is itself responsible for meeting more than 50 percent of the entire demand in our country here you can see uh, this is the coal based thermal power plant this is total thermal you can see it contributes 62.8 percent of the total demand out of which 54.2% comes from coal and 1.7% from lignite and other resources are here as you can see so coal based thermal power plant as you can see is the most important source of power generation in India and also the impact that uh, we were discussing a while ago has more uh, impact on the coal based thermal power plant hence I will focus on the coal based thermal po power plant here. Now to understand how, what the consequences or what can go wrong if there is a sudden unloading, we have to understand how coal-based thermal power plant works. In a coal-based thermal power plant, the two most important uh, raw material is the coal itself and water. What uh, is done is that there is a drum, something like this called boiler drum. As the name says, boiler means it is used to boil the water and convert it into steam. So coal is burnt inside this uh, drum. Okay, and that is used to boil water. Now, this water that you are seeing uh, is uh, collected through various pipes and with the help of nozzles. Okay, nozzles look something like this. So, with the help of nozzles, it is made to hit the turbine blade. So, what is a turbine? Turbine something looks like this, like a fan or something. Okay, which has aerodynamic shape. These are blades. So it looks something like this. So the high pressure steam that is coming out of the boiler drum is made to hit the turbine blades and this causes the rotation of the turbine. Now the shaft of the turbine is coupled to a generator causing the rotation of the generator hence generation of electricity. So this is the basic principle upon which the coal based thermal power plant works. Now we need to understand the generator that we are talking about. This generator is an AC generator which means it works on the laws of electromagnetic induction, right? One such law is the Lenz law. What does Lenz law says? The Lenz law says that the EMF induced in a conductor is such as it opposes the very cause of its own creation. Now, what does that mean here that uh, the according to Lenz law, the EMF generated from the generator will try to stop the cause by which it has been generated. Okay, now what is the cause of uh, generation of the EMF? The generation of EMF is because of the rotation of the generator. So eventually it will try to stop the generator from rotating so that no EMF is generated henceforth. So in order to do that, let's see what happens. Now let me make the picture of entire thing happening. So this is our steam and that steam is coming into the turbine. This is how we indicate turbine. Turbine is also called expander. Hence, this is the shape it has. So, it comes to turbine and from turbine, the generator is coupled something like this. This is a coupler and the generator is coupled here. Right? And the generator is causing generation of electricity. 
Now this turbine is let's say producing a mechanical torque in this direction causing the rotation of the whole turbo generator system. Now the generated EMF will try to oppose this and because of that it will generate a counter EMF in this direction which is which you can say a hypothetical torque but it is generated in that direction in opposite direction. So this is our mechanical torque essentially and this is our electrical torque in the opposite direction. Now as both the systems are coupled we can say that both of them are rotating at the same angular velocity which when multiplied to this torque causes torque times um, angular velocity which is power. So this is our electrical power and this is our mechanical power. Also we can say this is the supplied power PM and P is the demanded power that is whatever the demand is on the generator hence PE can be called as the demand power. So uh, eventually what is the relation between the supply and the demand? Well let's say if the demand is increasing so that means PE will increase. Increase in PE will result into increase in electromagnetic torque or the counter mechanical torque. This counter mechanical torque is also behaving as the controlling torque right because it is controlling the real mechanical torque uh, so that the whole system remains in a stable position. So uh, increase in PE means increase in TE and if TE is increasing that means the speed of the turbo generator system will reduce because that's what the generator wants. So in order to overcome this effect of uh, deceleration of the whole system, more amount of steam is required so that the mechanical torque overcomes this resistance from the electromagnetic torque and keeps on rotating the generator, hence supplying towards the consumer load. So this is how the whole system works. Now that's what uh, we discussed till now about uh, the whole thing and we saw everything about uh, the turbo generator system that we need here. Now what is the problem? The problem here comes if let's say the whole scenario was unknown. At 8.55 pm, let's say we don't know that any such thing is happening or the power system operators don't have any idea. What uh, What is there? At 8.55 pm we are saying that let's say there is a demand of 100 megawatt. Okay, ideally this is just uh, an example. So there is a demand of 100 megawatt and all of a sudden at 9 pm we are seeing because we don't know we are seeing that there is a sudden demand decrease and now the demand is new demand is 50 megawatt. So what is the problem if all this is unknown? At 8.55 pm what is happening the steam uh, that is being provided to the turbine the controller is providing uh, to the turbine is equivalent to that required for 100 megawatt power generation. That means whatever the steam is coming out the mechanical power is very high and that mechanical power is equivalent to 100 megawatt. Now the simple rule that is followed in a power plant is that PM must be equal to P. That is whatever the mechanical power or whatever is the supplied power that should be the demand power as well. Now at 8.55 pm 100 megawatt power generation is required. So the steam coming out, the steam that is given to the turbine is of equivalent to 100 megawatt power generation. So that is causing the generator to rotate and generate 100 megawatt. Now all of a sudden what we see that there is a decrease in demand. So that means there is a decrease in PE that is the electrical power demanded. Now if PE decreases as we as we saw that omega is constant, angular velocity is constant. Therefore the torque electromagnetic torque will also decrease. Here you can see in this picture the electromagnetic torque that the countering torque is there that will also decrease. But the mechanical torque will not decrease. Why? Because we are we don't know that there is a decrease in demand and we are still providing the same steam. So eventually what will happen this mechanical torque will be greater than the electrical torque and this is the point of whole problem. What will happen is the electromagnetic torque will be less than the electrical than the mechanical torque and because of that the mechanical torque will dominate the whole system and that will cause a sudden amount of acceleration sudden jerk and sudden acceleration in the whole turbo generator system now acceleration means there is rise in omega okay now why it is problematic let me clear this all as there is rise in omega as there is rise in omega because of the a sudden acceleration of the turbo generator system there will be rise in the 
centrifugal forces acting upon the generator as well as the turbine must you keep this in mind that uh, this is the increase in angular velocity whereas the increase in centrifugal force is directly proportional to the square of the angular velocity now that means there will be a huge amount of centrifugal force acting on the generator and that will result into the wear and tear of the entire generator system the conductors will be weird and teared the bolts will come out there will be a mechanical damage everywhere and not only that the turbine as i said is set of blades like this so these blades under the effect of this sudden force and sudden jerk will bend and break away and your turbine is one of the costliest uh, machine in the entire power system so eventually this uh, turbine will be destroyed the generator will be destroyed and this will not be just with one generator this will be happening with multiple generators at the same time because uh, the jerk will be uh, felt by every generator and that is why a possibility of blackout remains there okay here is uh, the picture of a whole thermal power plant scheme okay and this is the picture of a turbine here you are seeing this this set is called turbine this is the generator system okay so this there are set of blades here these blades get destroyed because of the uh, sudden amount of uh, jerk or centrifugal force acting upon it now there is one more problem not only this another problem that is here is let's say the 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 whole demand is not that much decreasing and somehow the generator is able to maintain the whole thing and there is no mechanical damage and all so even after that we cannot avoid the possibility of the increase of the angular velocity the angular velocity will increase of course now increase in angular velocity will also result into increase in frequency why because frequency is directly proportional to or what i can say is the manifestation of speed of generator it is given by pns upon 120 in an alternator right so ns is the uh, synchronous speed or generally speaking is the, it is the speed of the generator so p is the mechanical constant p is called the number of poles so avoiding p you can see that f and ns are directly related so increase in ns which will happen because of the increase in angular velocity will result into increase of frequency now increase of frequency means what will happen there will be increase in the line reactance x is given by 2 pi fl so if f increases obviously x will increase why that is problematic because the maximum power sending capability in a transmission line is given by vs vr upon x so now that sorry this will be just x okay this will be vsvr so vsvr upon x now if x increases that means there will be a reduction in the entire p max that is the maximum power sending capability not only that the ad current and hysteresis loss that we talk about in a transformer there are various transformer that we use in distribution in uh, generation so in the transformer there are these two types of losses that is the eddy current and hysteresis loss eddy current is directly proportional to f square and this is directly proportional to f so this two will also increase which will be seen as the increase in temperature of the transformer hence the transformer may trip under the sudden increase of temperature okay all of these systems are uh, there made to uh, just uh, tolerate the whole thing for a certain limit definitely rise of frequency is somewhat acceptable but it should not exceed the maximum of plus minus 3% that is even in the worst case scenario the frequency should not exceed more than 3% of its set value on the either side either decrement or increment why decrement is also not uh, okay because uh, decrement in frequency means decrement in the speed and if the speed it decreases that means again the supply frequency is decreasing now there are various motors inside the power system or power station itself so the if speed of those motors will also decrease which will result into further decrease in the power generation and eventually the whole generator will stop under the effect of the electromagnetic torque in that case all, uh, the electromagnetic torque will be greater than the mechanical torque hence the deacceleration of the whole system so this is the whole scenario uh, upon which uh, various conclusions were being made 
the there will also be rise in the voltage on the receiving end side why because uh, there as the load is decreasing that means the load current will also go down and because of that the armature reaction and the line drop will also be low so because of that the receiving end voltage on the uh, transmission line will be also at high now let me show you uh, some graph of the voltage and frequency so uh, this is the frequency and voltage graph that you are seeing as i said uh, there was a rise in uh, frequency as you can see here but uh, what you can find that the frequency rise was maintained in so well manner that it did not exceed the plus minus three percent bar okay you can see here at 9 pm when everyone switched off their lights that caused the rise in the frequency because of the demand decrease and when after 9 minutes everyone turned on their all loads that followed by a decline in the frequency but eventually it touched the 50 hertz line here you can see this is 50 hertz okay and as i said there was also a rise in the receiving end voltage because of the mentioned reason but when uh, everyone turned on their lights and all the voltage also dipped down now how this all thing was maintained this is up to now we talked about uh, if the whole thing was unplanned so uh, as the whole scenario was planned these are the actions the uh, posoko let us know that these were the actions they took so i will describe all these actions so first of all what uh, what they did was they began to cut down the steam supply to the power plant by 8:45 pm okay one more thing that you need to keep this in mind that uh, the coal based thermal power plant is not as responsive as other power plants that's uh, something you can call up as the drawback of the coal based thermal power plant what does that mean that uh, it cannot change the supply or demand uh, in uh, in a speedy manner just like all other power plants can do like hydroelectric or renewable resources so it takes time for the coal based thermal power plant to re achieve any of the equilibrium state that's why the steam cut down was started from 8 45 pm eventually that resulted into decrease in the mechanical power input and as the mechanical power input decreased but at that time keep this in mind that the electromagnetic torque was high why because the demand was not low at that time the demand got low at 9 pm but they took action and they began to decrease this mechanical power from 8 45 pm now you will ask that if they began to decrease this uh, mechanical power input or the steam input how the demand was met at that time so that was met by increasing the hydroelectric power generation so at that time the in there was an increase in the hydroelectric power generation so they kept on increasing this for 15 minutes so that it doesn't result into a cut off for that 15 minute gap okay so that was done at 9 pm exactly what happened everyone shut down their load and there was a decrease in the demand so because the mechanical power was decreased the coal based thermal power plant was able to absorb the shock and there was no acceleration in the whole system once the whole thing got over after 9 minutes after 9 pm after 9 minutes the hydroelectric power generation was continued again and it kept on increasing because as i said the coal based thermal power plant cannot uh, just uh, go to a new set point uh, so quickly so the hydroelectric power generation was still working and the coal based thermal power plant in the coal based thermal power plant the steam input was increased in a gradual manner it took it took around 17 minutes for the coal based thermal power plant to reach to the new set point so it took 15 minutes for the coal based thermal power plant to reach from high uh, supply to low supply and then from low supply to high supply or the normal supply it took another 17 minutes okay so that's what they said here you can see that uh, the hydro generation across uh, the country was maximized by 2045 hours and generation reduction of 17543 megawatt between 2045 to 2110 matching with demand reduction of 31 1089 megawatt so this was the demand reduction as you can see was achieved with these resources 
this hydro generation was again uh, let me clear this this hydro generation was again ramped up from 8 8016 megawatt to 19012 megawatt so you can see that the hydro generation was ramped up from 2110 to 27 2127 as i said it took around another 17 minutes for the whole thing to come to uh, the normal situation okay another thing is that the reduction of, of total 10950 megawatt generation was achieved through thermal gas and wind generation from 2045 to 2110 okay so it was not only thermal power plant but the maximum share was that of the thermal power plant followed by gas and the wind generation advanced actions such as switching of transmission lines taking reactors in service changing svc statcom hvdc set points were taken prior to the event for keeping voltage and line loadings within permissible limits now there was also a chance that if uh, everyone turn off their entire load so that could that fear was also there because that would result into a sudden spike in the reactive power demand as well once the event gets over as you can see here in this letter they have pointed out this this is a letter written uh, by the ministry of power uh, here you can see that uh, in this line that the appeal of honorable prime minister is to voluntarily switch off uh, only the lights from 9 pm on 5th april there is no call to switch off either street lights or appliances like tv refrigerator ac in homes okay so why this was said this was said because uh, if you shut down everything there will be an unprecedented decline in the whole demand okay and that amount of decline will result into failure of the coal based thermal power plant and various other power plants even if the whole event is known okay so the request was made that you should only strictly shut down or turn off the lights that you have in your home not street lights no tv no refrigerator no ac should be turned off there should be a minimum amount of load that should be there on the consumer end so that the whole system can remain in stability okay so this uh, fear was also there this doubt was also there that's why all the reactors svc these are the things that we use for the reactive power control in the transmission line there is a video that i have made on this whole topic you can watch here in the i section so uh, these things were active so that they can uh, take action and control the reactive power upsurge if any such thing happens but uh, fortunately no such failure was there and everything went on smoothly as they have said in the next line the event was managed smoothly without any untoward in incident while power system parameters were maintained within limits so this was a uh, by the expertise of the people by increasing the hydro generation they also took care of no blackout even before or after the event and also they controlled everything they protected the generator the turbine everything was under control so in this way the whole situation was managed uh, here you can see a uh, data of frequency and uh, the demand as you can see from 2052 to 219 there was a decline in the megawatt uh, generation from the generator but as you can see the frequency has been well maintained from 49.73 hertz uh, that was at 2052 and this was the time when when everyone turned off their lights at 9 pm so here you can see there was sudden increase in uh, frequency 50.05 then 50.03 then suddenly it went to 50.16 50.21 but it was more or less near this 50 hertz okay so in this way the whole thing was maintained so that's all for today guys thanks for watching if you have liked this video press the like button let me know in the comment section what do you think about this video what are your suggestion any, any queries if you have put them in the comment section below don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to receive the notification of every single video i make share this video this is vivek chaube and i will see you next time